Okay, let's go ahead and use synthetic division to do this problem. And uh, synthetic division is an awesome tool that we learn in algebra, and it relates to uh, polynomials. Now here, we obviously uh, have a polynomial and we're dividing it by another polynomial. So we're talking about polynomial division, but we can use this thing called synthetic division when, we can, when we're dividing by something with a linear factor. Now, a linear factor is uh, basically a factor with just an x uh, to the first power involved. Now, I, I don't really uh, want to turn this video into a complete lesson on synthetic division as uh, it's a pretty big topic, polynomial division. And I have additional videos on this in my Algebra 2 playlist on my channel. And uh, I'm going to leave you some, with some additional guidance on it. So if you're confused about synthetic division, uh, you'll definitely want to do more uh, prompts than, uh, than just this one. But this will give you a pretty good um, kind of foundation or review on synthetic division. It's an awesome little tool. And I'm going to show you its power here in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have all the main math courses, uh, starting from pre-algebra, have Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and they're going to be launching um, pre-calculus here shortly. But I also have many courses in the area of test preparation. So if you are preparing for an exam, like the GED, HiSET, TASC, uh, maybe the GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, CLEP exam, ACUPLACER, ALEX, uh, SAT, I think I said that, or ACT, there's a ton of exams out there. Our teacher certification exam, like the Praxis or Nursing Entrance, TEAS, there are so many exams that people have to take that have a considerable amount of math on these exams. And if you don't get through the math on these exams, you don't get through the exam. And that has uh, serious negative consequences for you uh, out there trying to achieve your goals. So I have great test prep uh, courses. Just go to my site, uh, check out my full course catalog. If I don't have what you're studying for, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. Um, I also work a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. I have a great homeschool learning program and obviously help those who are just struggling in your uh, math class. Now, one thing that I can't do for you that you have to do for yourself is the following, okay? If you want to be successful in mathematics, and I assume that you want to uh, improve or learn math because you're watching this video, you have to take great math notes. So over decades of teaching mathematics, one thing is apparent to me, those students who take excellent notes, I'm not talking about good notes, I'm talking about fantastic notes, um, those students always do very, very well in mathematics, and the reverse is true. Those students who uh, don't take notes, or maybe their notes look like, like this, so when they take notes, they uh, look at their notes and they go, mm, I'm not quite sure what I wrote. I did all of this way back in the good old days of the 1980s. That was such a cool time uh, to go to school. And believe me, I made all the mistakes and then some. Okay, If I had a cell phone back in those days, I don't even think I would graduate because I was already distracted enough. Uh, listen. If you're distracted in class, you're going to have to get undistracted. And the only way to get undistracted is to stay focused on an activity that's going to keep you, um, you know, listening to the teacher and writing this stuff down. That is note-taking. So note-taking is not optional. When you go into your math class, you got to be like, all right, I'm prepared to listen and write everything down in a very neat and organized way. And I know it's challenging because you're trying to listen to the teacher and write at the same time. I get it. Okay. It is hard work and it is a skill but you got to really work at it, okay? Because if uh, the better your notes, then the better everything is going to go for you in terms of math. So as you're uh, improving in your note-taking, I actually offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's get back to this synthetic division problem. Now, if you think you know how to do this, go ahead and pause the video and... Uh, do this problem, but uh, let's quickly talk about the power of synthetic division. All right, so let's take a look at our problem. Here's our problem down here. We're going to take this uh, polynomial and we're going to divide it by this polynomial here. Okay, so this is, uh, we're talking about division of polynomials. That's the topic. Now we have this little fancy word called synthetic 
division. And synthetic division is like a shortcut technique that we can use to divide uh, polynomials uh, when one of the uh, polynomials here is a linear factor. Okay, so again, um, this is kind of, you know, the sub set of polynomial division that we're talking about. So synthetic division, you can't use in every single polynomial division uh, problem. Okay, there has to be that linear factor involved. But why do we study synthetic division in the first place? Well, synthetic division is an awesome little shortcut to evaluate um, uh, functions, okay, for a particular value. So if you take a look at uh, this, and let me kind of erase this right here. Let's take a look at this um, function, right? So we have negative 2x cubed plus 8x squared minus 9x plus 7. So let's write it this way. Here's the function, and here's that polynomial right there. And now let's say I want to find f of 2. In other words, I'm going to plug in 2 uh, into this function, and I'm going to do all the math. And when I do that, okay, I'm going to uh, substitute all these x's here for 2, and then I'm going to go through all the number crunching. And when we do all this number crunching, we get 5. Okay, so f of 2 of this particular function is 5. Now, if you look here, this uh, polynomial right here, this linear factor, this is x minus 2. This 2 right here, okay, uh, this x minus 2 is the same. When we do this problem, let me just state it this way. When we do this uh, synthetic division problem, the result is the same as evaluating this function. All right, I don't know if that makes sense or not, but basically... Uh, the whole idea behind uh, synthetic division is to quickly evaluate these functions. So here I have this function here. If I want to evaluate it for 2, okay, I have this 2 right there. Okay, that's the same as finding f of 2 for this function. I guess maybe that's the way, uh, you know, a quick uh, way to think about it. Now, again, I'm kind of... Uh, brushing over this topic, I would really want to teach you this more formally. So if you're interested in learning this uh, uh, and you need to know this stuff, I would suggest like my Algebra 2, maybe my College Algebra course, I uh, thoroughly teach this in my polynomials chapter. But I also have a lot of other videos on uh, this topic in my uh, playlist on my channel, in my Algebra 2 uh, playlist, you can find more videos on this. But um, Again, I'm kind of quickly uh, brushing over this. Now, let's just keep in mind that here is our function. And when we find f of 2, our answer was 5. Okay, so this is one approach to evaluate a function. I could plug in this 2, do all the number crunching, and I get my 5. But there is another uh, thing that we can uh, use here, and that is called synthetic division, which is an awesome tool. Okay, so how does it work? Well... Here is our uh, polynomial, and we're going to divide it by this other polynomial. Now, let's take a look at this polynomial right here. Notice it's written in standard form. All right, so in other words, we have x cubed, we have x squared, it's an x, and then a number. And no terms are missing. In other words, it's not x cubed and then x. I have an x squared, an x, and everything else here. Okay, so again, um, I'm kind of... Uh, doing a quick overview of synthetic division, but there is a lot of little details we, you know, I really would want to stress to you formally, but uh, this video is just a quick review on synthetic division, okay? But anyways, I'm trying to cover all the basics here. So when you do synthetic division, you have to have each term represented. So if you don't have a uh, term, in other words, if there wasn't an x squared here, I would have to put a zero as a placeholder. Okay, so that's why we have to do additional problems uh, to continue to really learn synthetic division. But anyways, hopefully that makes uh, sense. Okay, now notice, all right, now this is in standard form. Let's take a look at the coefficients. Here I have negative 2, so I'm going to write that negative 2 there. Here I have 8, I'm going to write that 8 there. Here I have negative 9, I'm going to write it right there. And then I have my 7, and I'm going to write it right there. Again, let's say there was no x squared term. Well, I would have to put a zero here as a placeholder. Okay, you don't get to skip it. I guess that's the best way to explain it. Now, with that being um, uh, stated, the next thing you want to do is to kind of draw this little bracket, this little L thing like so, and give yourself enough room to write underneath uh, these numbers. So it's going to extend just like this all the way over. And um, now let's take a look at this two. Okay, where does this two come from? It comes from this two right there. Now, this, whatever this number is, it's x minus this number we're going to put right there. So if I had x plus 2, what do you think we would put right here? 
well, it would be x minus a minus 2. So we would uh, be divided by negative 2, all right? Again, things that we need to uh, really study more thoroughly in the area of uh, synthetic division. And there's some cool theorems out there called uh, the factor theorem, remainder theorem, all these things you need to know. But hopefully, uh, you understand the setup here, OK? All right, so that is the setup uh, for our synthetic division. And if you say, OK, no, I get this now. Well, then now we just got to talk about the mechanics, which is really an awesome type of thing. All right, so negative 2, what we're going to do, first step, all right, this is the way it works. This is our problem. You take this very, very first number, you drop it down right down here. Always, whatever this is, you drop it down. Okay, now this is how uh, this is what we're going to do next. You're going to take this 2, multiply it by that negative 2, is what? That's negative 4. Okay? So we'll put our answer right there in the next column, and then we add down. 8 plus negative 4 is 4. Okay? All right. So what do I do now? Well, I'm going to do the same thing uh, over again. I'm going to go 2 times 4 is 8. Okay? Then I'm going to add down negative uh, 9 plus 8 is negative 1. Okay, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to do the same thing again. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Okay, I put my answer in the next column over. And then I have 7 plus negative 2 is 5. And I am done. There's no more. Uh, uh, I, can't, I can't go any further in the problem. This last number, notice I have a little uh, little line here. This is our remainder. Okay, this is the answer. This is the same as this. Okay, remember I found f of 2 of that function. Our answer was 5. So it's the same thing. This answer here is f of 2. Okay, our answer is 5. So if you want to evaluate this function for a particular value, okay, for example, 2, I want to find f of 2 of this function. All right, it's the same thing as synthetically dividing by 2. And then we look at the remainder. And there you go. That is the answer. So that's why synthetic division is so cool. And uh, really, its practical application is uh, looking for zeros when we're solving more advanced polynomial equations. Again, you know, stuff that we, you know, I'm chomping at the bit to get into. And I don't want to turn this into like a three-hour video on polynomials, uh, solving polynomial equations, and factoring, and log division, synthetic division, and rational root there, but all this stuff you need to know for sure, especially, you know, if you're studying synthetic division, it's probably a good indication that you're like at the algebra two level, uh, college algebra level, maybe pre-calculus level. So that's good. That means that you are progressing forward. But um, again, you know, there's so much to learn, you know, and you can't possibly learn this stuff and remember it by, uh, without taking great uh, math notes. All right, but uh, let's just kind of get back to this one problem. So if this was a good little review for you on synthetic division, then I did my job. And uh, hopefully you'll consider smashing that like button for this video. Now, if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for a long time. Have a lot of content on my channel. Uh, organized from basic to advanced math, all there for you. My goal always is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable manner. That's my mission. And if you understand that and you like my teaching style, then I have a ton of resources there for you. But my best resources will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.